The ASP.NET Web Forms Page Lifecycle Stages and Events. This video lecture will introduce you to the ASP.NET Web Forms Page Lifecycle Stages and Events. The ASP.NET Web Forms Page Lifecycle is important to understand in order to implement events and initialize controls. For example, if you have a method on your page load that binds data to a dropdown, if you don't have it wrapped in a if not page is post back, the user selection will get removed when the form is submitted because the page load comes before post back event handling in the page life cycle. The page life cycle can be broken down into eight general stages. The page request, start, page initialization, page load, page validation, post back event handling, rendering, and unload. In most of your development, you'll be concerned with stages four through six, page load, page validation, and post back event handling. Stage one is the page request. When the page is requested by a user, i.e. the client makes a request to the server, the caching, parsing, and compiling is determined by ASP.NET. Stage two is start. In the start stage, the page properties are set. In ASP.NET, page is an object with properties such as request and is postback. The request property would contain HTTP request data such as query string parameters and headers. The is postback property tells you whether the page has been loaded for the first time or if the user is posting the page. These are properties that you can access in the code behind of ASPX pages. Stage three is page initialization. In the page initialization phase, page controls become available and themes are applied. However, if this is a postback, the properties of the controls will not yet have the data from the postback. For example, if a page has a text input to enter your email address and the form is submitted, the text box object will not yet have the user's email address in the text property of the control. Stage four is page load. During the page load phase, the control properties are set from the view state. This means any user selected values being posted are now available in the properties of the controls. Stage five is page validation. During the page validation step, the validate method is called for all of the validation controls of the page. The validation control properties are also set, such as is valid. Stage six is post back event handling. During the post back event handling stage, if the user is submitting data and the page is posting back to itself, then events are handled. For example, if I have a button control with an on-click event, when the user clicks the button, the page lifecycle will go through all of the steps before this one, and the on-click method will be called during this step. Stage seven is rendering. During the rendering phase, view state is saved for the page. View state is responsible for maintaining the state of the view or the HTML, such as text input and select values across postbacks. This makes forms sticky so that field values don't disappear after submitting the form. This phase calls the render method for each control that renders the HTML to be returned in the response. Stage eight is unload. This stage is the cleanup stage and occurs after the response is sent to the client. Page properties are unloaded. The page lifecycle is now complete. In addition to the stages, there are lifecycle event methods that can be utilized in the code behind of your page. Let's take a look at these methods and in what order they are fired. 
So here I've created an ASPX page called pagelifecycle.aspx. We're going to use this page and its code behind to take a look at the available lifecycle event methods. So in the code behind, I have added a lifecycle method for the available methods that we can use in our code behind. Normally, the only lifecycle method that you will get uh, when you create a new ASPX page with a code behind is the page load. Um, you will also get uh, button click events or uh, control event methods as well. However, there are some other methods that you can use in your code behind and they follow the page lifecycle. So let's go ahead and debug so that we can hit these breakpoints and see in what order these methods are fired. So I'm going to hit my first breakpoint, pre-init. The start stage is complete and page properties have been loaded and we enter the initialization phase. You now have access to properties such as the page is post back property. And as you can see, we are not posting back. Next, we get the init method. All controls and control properties are now initialized. I can set control properties, such as the text property of a label control. I could not do that in the page pre init method. Next, we get init complete. Everything has been initialized, and this event can be used for tasks that require everything to be first initialized. Next, we get preload. If you need to perform a task before the page load, you can use this method. We're now transitioning from the initialization stage to the load stage. And the page load is where the majority of your magic will happen. We are now in the load stage, and this is where you'll perform most of your page related tasks, such as data binding to drop downs and setting text. Now we are not in a post back, so this label will not get set. Not this round. Um, you will notice that we are going to skip over this submit click method because this is not a post back and that event has not been fired. This method, load complete, you can use when you need to perform a task after the page load phase is completed. And then pre-render, we are now in the rendering phase. You can use this method if you need to modify a controls markup output before it is rendered. And then we get the unload method. We are now in the unload phase. Use this method if you need to do final cleanup and the page lifecycle is complete. So here is my page, page lifecycle.aspx. Now let's take a look at what this lifecycle looks like if I hit the submit button. So I get my page.preinit, same as before. Page init, same as before. Init complete same as before, preload, same as before, and then I get page load. Now we are in a post back, the po page dot is post back property is true. And so a new label is going to get its text set. Notice the page load happened before the button submit click event method. So we are now in the post back event handling phase, which will be skipped if we aren't in a post back. So I'm going to set some text uh, on a label in this method. And then we get page load complete, page pre-render, page unload, and the life cycle is complete. So you can see I set this text during page init, I set this text during the page load. I set this text when the page posted back. I set this text when my button 
on click event method was first fired in that order. So, some review. There are eight stages in the page lifecycle. The page request, start, initialization, load, validation, postback event handling, rendering, and unload. In most of your development, you will be concerned with stages four through six, page load, page validation, and postback event handling. The methods and the order which they can be called in your code behind dealing with the page life cycle. Pre-init, init, init complete, preload, page load, and this is where step four begins in the stages four through six where you will be primarily concerned with. Button submit click, page load complete, page pre-render, and page unload. The life cycle is complete. In this video lecture, you are introduced to the ASP.NET Web Forms page lifecycle stages and events. Thank you for listening.